Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we need to talk about the tropics once again. I took a little bit of a break from talking about the tropics because there was no imminent threat, uh, but now we have to talk about a system in the Gulf, but also Hurricane Larry, or should I say Major Hurricane Larry, out there in the middle of the Atlantic. We're going to talk all about what that one's going to do, and also this brand new Gulf system as well. <music> Alright, now before we get into things, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I would also like to remind you guys, as always, we uploaded our most recent winter forecast just about a week ago or more. You can check that out on the top right corner of your screen today. For today's comment of the day, I want to know what do you think will come of this golf system. Let me know in the comments down below, and I will be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video. We're taking a look here at the satellite imagery here of Major Hurricane Larry. And this one has been developing an eye for a while. It clearly has one at this point. It's just not uncovered yet. You can see there are some clouds within there. Typically, the stronger the storm gets and more mature the storm gets, uh, the less clouds we see within the eye and more of that just perfect round eye with nothing inside of it. Uh, that is likely what we're going to be seeing over the next day or two. Here's the satellite imagery for the new Gulf system, and as you can see, it's mostly located over the Yucatan Peninsula. This is kind of a tropical storm graveyard, if you will, uh, and it's kind of, it, it, it really, we don't know yet if this one will make it past all of this land or not, and that's the biggest question mark. But I do think that if it does survive over this land, that we will end up seeing the probabilities go up dramatically for this one to end up developing and eventually maybe hit the Gulf Coast, unfortunately. Here's the cone forecast, by the way, for Hurricane Larry. And as you can see, it's expected to remain a major hurricane all the way through next Thursday. So we're looking at a very long track major hurricane at this point. The probabilities for a United States impact have gone down dramatically, but I would say for uh, Atlantic Canada, there still is about a 20% chance of uh, a direct impact there to you guys, and then about an 80% chance that it just stays out to sea, fortunately. So there's a lot to be happy about with this storm um, that, you know, it's not heading directly towards the United States or directly towards Canada at this point, but we still don't know what's going to end up happening with this one. And we have seen major changes, very short, you know, short range with some of these hurricanes in the past. So we're going to continue to track this one regardless. Here's some of that spaghetti model guidance. And as you can see, this is our GEFS model. And this one has it remaining a very strong low pressure system for a very long time. Uh, and we see a lot of Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, some of these bringing direct impacts onto you guys there. So that's that 20% chance that I gave it, like I said before. Here's the European models spaghetti model guidance. And it's the same exact thing. We see a lot of these coming on shore to Atlantic Canada there. Uh, this one I would say has about maybe 30 or 40% of these hitting Canada. And then here's the individual models. And these ones, yes, there's only one showing a Canada impact, but a lot of those are too close for comfort there, as you can see. Uh, and I would say a majority of these are extremely close with one or two west shifts, which that's not too far-fetched. Uh, a lot of these, or if not all of them, would have this one directly impacting Canada, which is very scary to think about. But we're going to walk through this. It could just as easily shift east, which would be very good news. In a moment, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the intensity guidance for this storm. We're also just going to break down that Gulf system in just a moment as well with a lot of spaghetti model guidance, uh, the probability forecast. We're also going to just break down the uh, the total sea surface temperatures at this point uh, and some of the dust as well, seeing what this storm is going to basically have to go up against. All right, now here we are taking a look here at the intensity guidance and as you can see this one is a mid-tier category three at this point and there's a pretty decent shot that it goes up to a category four at this point there is one model that shows a category five so that cannot be ruled out but it seems the most likely that this one will hover around category three or four for multiple days to come eventually slowly tapering off in the long range due to heading further and further north towards colder waters. That is what is eventually going to eat this storm up, but there is no shear and no dust to really effectively break up this storm anytime soon. We're going to have to rely on that northern track to just slowly bring this one back down uh, until eventually it's just a normal low pressure system, which is a little frightening to think about that this one, we're going to have to deal with it for a long time and it's going to be a nail biter, but hopefully at this point, I think it seems likely that impacts seem 
less likely than originally thought possible. Um, here's the low pressure location for this golf system, which at this point has much more of an imminent uh, chance to impact the United States. And the low pressure location is actually over Mexico here. A lot of the precipitation was further west, or sorry, further east, better yet, than this low pressure system. But at this point, we're going to have to see if it can make it over Mexico into the Gulf, because if it makes it into the Gulf, it has obviously a decent chance at developing. At this point, we have a 30% chance of this one developing over the next five days, and it's likely that it would be heading towards either Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, or Florida at this point. So we're going to have to watch that one very carefully. I expect that probability to go up if this one makes it over the open water without really breaking up at all. That would definitely increase the probability for sure at this point. Here's some of that spaghetti model guidance for this one. The GEFS model basically has this one breaking up because none of these have it really lowering in pressure and all of these have it ending over Mexico or very shortly after moving offshore of Mexico. It's the same thing with the Canadian model here, uh, but our individual models, as you can see, are all over the place. We have a, a few Mexico impacts after it moves offshore of Mexico into the Gulf of Mexico back into Mexico. That's a lot of Mexico's. But we also see some heading towards Louisiana or Texas, and then we see one heading towards Florida. So there's a lot of options on the table. And if this one does make it over open water and begins to develop, we don't really have any idea where it's going to go at this point. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is move on, take a look at the intensity guidance, the current sea surface temperatures, and even a little bit of the dust we have out there right now that could help uh, hold this one back a little bit, hopefully. All right, now here we are taking a look here at the intensity guidance. And as you can see, this one has a long way to go. We don't really have anything happening until about days three. Whereas at, by that point, we have multiple models on board with a tropical storm at that point. Uh, but none of these really have this one really popping off, which is the good news at this point. That could change after this one moves over open water if it, if it does manage to pull that off and then begins to develop. We could see a lot of these bring this a lot higher than this. But at this point, there's only really good news to say. We're going to have to watch this one a lot closer uh, in the near future. Here's the current sea surface temperatures. And on paper, you could tell where Larry's going is really the hot spot. And that's why it's going to have such an easy time maintaining that major hurricane status. But our Gulf system is going to have to go up against potentially some below normal temperatures if it does head kind of in a northeasterly direction towards Florida, towards Mississippi, towards Alabama, towards Louisiana. It's going to have a pretty difficult time developing over those waters where it's a little bit cooler than normal. Speaking of cooler than normal, let's move towards the Gulf of Mexico chart here. And as you can see, for a long time, basically since mid-July, we've been dealing with these above normal temperatures. Uh, but just recently, with all of these storms moving through, because many tropical systems tend to bring, you know, cooler waters to the areas that they go over, they eat up a lot of that heat, uh, and it just tends to cool over the waters where they move over. Uh, and that's the only good news that has come through from all of these systems that have moved through. They've cooled the waters out behind them, and now the Gulf, you can see, has been consistently cooling to where now we're at about average for the Gulf. And mostly it's a warmer than normal area and an equally cooler than normal area next to each other that's bringing it to about average or, or so. Here is our Saharan dust. And as you can see, there's actually plenty of it around the Atlantic, uh, except for where Larry is. So Larry is not dealing with this dust. That, again, is why it's having such an easy time developing. But where this Gulf system is, there is going to be some dust to contend with. And that is also another factor that could hold this one back. So at this point, there's a lot of question marks with the system. I have seen tropical systems prevail in these types of circumstances, and I wouldn't be surprised if that necessarily does happen. But this is definitely better news uh, than what it could be, uh, and there's a lot of things that should lead us to believe there's a good chance this one be, will be held back, uh, but all things are possible. Again, that's always our motto here at Direct Weather. We go over all the possibilities so nobody ever gets caught off guard. Anyway, that's it for this video. This is a little little preview with the, the, the week or so ahead of the tropical uh, weather. We really have a lot to talk about. There is possibly going to be some more invests heading off of Africa soon. We're reaching the peak of the hurricane season in about a week. It seems like a lot of the activity is behind this already, which is good news. There's a lot to talk about in the tropics, but that's all I have for today's video. For today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. I feel like a lot of this stuff is pretty simple on paper. So my confidence is a little higher than normal for this kind of a long range system on both of them. For today's comment of the day, we uploaded our September forecast. And I asked you guys, do you like a September that kind of feels like an extension of summer or a September that feels like um, 
kind of, a, you know, fall month. And Trevor B6 said, I like September to look and feel like September. September brings crisp, fresh, cool air and vivid blue skies. September is a season all on its own. Uh, and I definitely miss Septembers like that. I feel like here in Virginia, even back when I was a kid, we would get a lot cooler Septembers and Octobers. I miss those true falls. Last fall was the first fall in a long time where I felt like it was actually cooler uh, and more like how it should be. Let me know how you feel about that. Do you guys have a good fall last year? I hope we have another one anyway. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lily Lupin, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crunenthal. If you would like to be a part of this exciting patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.